Hi folks. I've had a few people ask about the procedure to remove and reinstall DPFs from a Detroit Diesel 1 box. So today we're going to take a look at that. Now with a Detroit powered unit you're going to get an engine light whenever the DPFs need to be removed and cleaned or replaced. The fall code will be SPN3720 FMI15. Now in this example I'm going to be using a EPA10 Detroit Diesel 1 box. This is an earlier model EPA-10 also. It's probably the most difficult that you're going to work on. Newer generations of the one box had things moved around and things changed. It made it much easier to service them. Obviously the first thing you want to do is remove any steps or fairings or anything that are in the way of the one box. The next thing you'll want to do is remove the DOC inlet pressure tube from the sensor box. If you loosen the fitting just a little bit, the entire tube can then swing out of the way. The fittings for these tubes and also the temperature sensors themselves can get really seized in there over time. If the DOC outlet temperature sensor is not seized too much, I'd recommend removing it just so you don't damage or disturb it in any way. But if it's really seized in there, don't fight it, don't damage it. You can actually leave it in there, it doesn't get in the way. On this generation 1 box, the biggest thing you'll have to remove is the sensor box from the top. To do this, you'll need to disconnect almost all the temperature sensors and also the DPF outlet pressure tube. The sensor box is attached to the one box with three bolts. Again, this is another item you'll have to watch out for because they have been known to break. Now we've got most of everything out of the way. Again, on newer model one boxes, you won't have to deal with most of this. You'll almost immediately be able to jump in and start taking the filters out without moving too much other stuff. Now to get at the filters inside, we have to remove two heat shields. They're held on by 10 bolts. These bolts thread into small clips and these are another item you need to watch because they almost always break. You should have new ones on hand to replace them. Six of these bolts remove the front heat shield and four bolts hold on the rear heat shield. Two of the bolts are only accessible from underneath the truck. They can be a bit of a pain to get out, but it's really worth doing. That rear heat shield can really get in the way of removing and installing that rear DPF. Once the four bolts are out, just slide the heat shield back and down. It doesn't have to come right out. Now we can see the clamps that hold the DPFs in place. Pay attention to the orientation of the clamps. They need to be reinstalled exactly as you found them. Now to remove the DPFs, just loosen the clamps off. If they're seized or if they break off or even if you have to cut them, don't worry about it because you absolutely need to use new clamps and seals when you reinstall the DPFs. Once you loosen off both clamps, Detroit recommends that you move both clamps inboard on the filter. The way I tend to do it is to move both clamps to the left. The band clamp on the left side has enough room to slide to the left and free up enough space for the DPF to slide out. Once the clamps are out of your way, you can lift the DPF up and out. Discard the old clamps and also the sealing ring on the inlet side of the DPF. Removing the second DPF is basically the same procedure as removing the first one. Loosen the clamps, slide them to the left, and you can use a small pry bar or something to lift the DPF out and start to move it out through the opening that the first DPF made. After you have them out, remove your seal rings, clean up any dirt or debris that's left behind from the old clamps. And this is a good time to inspect your DOCs for any damage, cracking, overheating, anything like that. At this point you either clean or replace your DPFs and you're ready to reinstall them. We install the inboard DPF first, install a new ceiling ring, and then place your new clamps in the same position you had them when you removed them either both to the left or both inboard on the filter. Lining up the filter during reinstallation can be a little tricky, but take your time and make sure you get it just right because you don't want any exhaust leaks here. Here you see the filter being supported by a special Detroit tool made for doing this, but the same can be accomplished with a small pry bar or two. Once the inner filter is in place and secured with the clamps, you can move on to the next one. Once again, just line it up and tighten down the new clamps. And that just about does it for the filters. Now you just need to reinstall anything that was removed to gain access to them. Once this is done, there's one more important step you can't forget. And that's to reset the DPF ash accumulator. This is done through Detroit software. If you have an engine light on telling you that you're due for ash cleaning, 
this is what will clear that vault. And that brings us to the end. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that like button. You can subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And as always, thanks for watching.